You are now listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report. Flash Report. For our viewing audience, wherever you may be, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, today is a very exciting day for the Pelicans franchise and for the New Orleans community. Before we begin, I'd like to take a moment to take you through the order of procession for our guest speakers today. In the front row, Pelicans Governor, Mrs. Gail Benson. To my left, Executive Vice President of Basketball Operations, David Griffin. General Manager, Trajan Langdon. And Head Coach, Willie Green. I'd also like to take a moment to welcome Coach Green's family here. We are very excited that you could all join us today. I would now like to welcome to the podium, Mrs. Gail Benson. And thank you, Todd. And thank you all for being here today. It is so nice to see everyone in person once again. This is an exciting day for the Pelicans, the city of New Orleans, and the state of Louisiana as we introduce Willie Green, our new head coach. Before we do that, I would like to recognize all the due diligence, research, and patience that David Griffin and Tejan that have put into this extensive and important search. I could not be more proud of David and his staff going through a season during this pandemic and as we find ourselves here today with the hiring of Willie Green. I could not be more excited about the season ahead and look forward to the draft on Thursday night as we continue to build our roster. However, we are here today to welcome Willie Green and his family to New Orleans, especially his wife, Tara, and their children, Aaliyah, Mason, and Ross. We are so glad that you were able to make it here today. We are so excited for you all to be a part of our Pelicans family and this community and welcome you back home. Thank you. I also want to say congratulations to Willie on the remarkable run to the NBA Finals with the Phoenix Sun this past season. We have always had a tremendous amount of respect and admiration for Monty Williams. And seeing you on the sidelines with him made watching the finals so much more exciting for us here in New Orleans. We are so proud of all your hard work and success. So many players and coaches around the NBA have offered such positive support for you as you take over the position of head coach for our Pelicans confirming what we already knew, that you are the perfect coach. No pressure, <laughs> <laughs> but now we look forward to you making a championship run right here in New Orleans. We are looking forward to an exciting season, not only here in New Orleans, but also with our newly announced G League team, the Birmingham Squadron that I know Willie, David, and Trajan will certainly use this wonderful opportunity to develop our young players. Thank you all, and I cannot wait to see everyone back inside the Smoothie King this season. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Benson. Now I'd like to welcome Executive Vice President of Basketball Operations, David Griffin. Thank you. As, as Mrs. Benson mentioned, this was from the beginning, a, a collaborative press process, not, not only with Trajan and Swin and our, our whole team, but with ownership right from the get-go. And it was very important to us that anybody in this process that we got to the point of being intrigued by as a real candidate was going to meet with Mrs. Benson and with Dennis and their team. And that happened with Willie. And the connection and the synergies between them was really palpable from the beginning. You could see it, you could feel it. Um, this process that she talked about in terms of due diligence was very thorough. And unfortunately, as Dennis pointed out today, we're getting experience doing this. So we hope we're done for a little while. Um, but it was a very, it was a very thorough process and, and one that involved a great deal of intel gathering. And when you do that, 
you talk to coaches at other teams about the candidates you're talking to. And initially, as we told you, Trajan and I, when we met with you at the end of the season, we were focusing on people that were part of last year's process. So we started calling coaches in reference to those candidates. And what happened, and invariably it came down to all the time, have you talked to Willie Green yet? Every general manager I talked to that had gone through a coaching search was curious about it. Have you talked to Willie Green yet? Every head coach that I would talk to about assistance, have you talked to Willie Green yet? And it became something that became really a, almost a joke between Trajan and I. And when we finally did set up to have our first Zoom with Swin, Trajan and I during Chicago, we could at least say we've now talked to Willie Green. What was revealed during that process and what we came to believe very powerfully and believe today is that Willie is a man who, while he's made three finals appearances in four years as an assistant coach, which is absolutely unheard of, he's a man of authentic character, rooted in joyfulness, rooted in gratitude, and he has a demonstrated ability to galvanize a group and engender a spirit and a clarity of purpose that is needed to lead young men. This has me incredibly energized um, and very, very excited because I have a lot of experience in this area in terms of blending the right leadership off the court and on the court. I've seen it firsthand in Phoenix when we were able to add Steve Nash and Mike D'Antoni's leadership to a young nucleus that involved a young Amari Stoudemire, Sean Marion, and an even younger Joe Johnson. What came from that galvanizing transformative event was a run that became known as seven seconds or less and multiple runs to the conference finals and 60 win seasons. What came from that experience in Cleveland when we were able to add Ty Lu and a kid from Akron to a group that included Kyrie Irving, a very young Tristan Thompson and a young Kevin Love was a 52 year drought without a title being broken in the city of Cleveland. A market not unlike this one, a market that richly deserved that success just like this one does. And what we have right now is a sleeping giant, a sleeping giant that we're now giving the right leadership piece to. And we hope that what we're able to do in the coming weeks of this off season and heading up through the following years is build a sustainable winner that's rooted in that gratitude and that joyfulness led by Willie Green and the players that we're able to bring to the fore that can represent Steve Nash, that can represent that leadership voice, that can represent the shooting that we need to put around our great young stars. We'll be moving towards that. I would liken what happens from the outside when you look at what we're doing within a team to reading a page one letter at a time, but you're doing it days apart. You don't really see the picture. But what happens is this becomes a tapestry of moves and Willie is a giant leap forward towards bringing this to light, this vision to light. We will be making a series of moves that bring that picture into clarity. And if you take it the totality of everything that happened this off season, we hope you see that picture very clearly. So again, I, I wanna thank Willie, I wanna thank his family. Uh, Tara and my wife Meredith have communicated along the way as well and they are very excited about each other. Swin does the most remarkable job of, of bringing families together and making this Pelican's family feel like your family. And we're grateful for that. We're so grateful you were part of that as well. Um, and without further ado, I'd like to introduce Trajan Langdon. Thanks, Griff. It's always uh, difficult and challenging following a man like that. So I'm going to keep this thing brief because um, the man over there is, is who we're all here for. So first of all, I want to follow up uh, Mrs. B and Griff in, in um, congratulating you and welcoming you and Tara and your beautiful family to the Crescent City here in New Orleans. Um, my wife and our boys moved here about two years ago, and we're very proud to call this place home. So. Looking forward for you guys to be here and, and do the same. So, um, Willie Green, 15 years ago, um, small anecdote is the first time that I met Willie um, was in Cologne, Germany. We played in a preseason tournament that actually the Suns were a part of as well. And we uh, lined up against each other. 
he was part of the Philadelphia 76ers and I was on a team in uh, Moscow, Russia. He was a starting two guard for Philly and I was a starting two guard for our team. And it was the first time that we actually met each other. Um, they got the best of us by about 20 or 30 points that <laughs> night. Um, and Griff was in the stands that night, probably riding up uh, a whole lot more on Willie Green than he was Trajan Langdon. But um, it's just, uh, it's, it's wonderful how this world works, how this game works, and how, this, how the game of basketball can bring people together. So 15 years later, the three of us are on stage here uh, on the same team. So it's uh, really cool. So, um, and following what Griff said about this process, the, the, the one thing I wanted to, to bring up about Willie, um, as Griff said, we did a whole lot of intel, a whole lot of calling of other teams, um, people that Willie had worked with, people that Willie had coached and played with over the years. Um, there was one word that kept coming up regularly, and that was the word of, that was, the, the word was presence. Um, and we felt in our search that that word was incredibly important for our next leader. And when talking to guys that you have coached and played with, um, the things that they said about that was he was always poised. Um, he had a way of communicating things that were felt and were received and embraced all the time. And it's not only about what things were said, but it's the way that they were said, the timing, and how they were said. And I think leaders in any industry have to have a presence. And our group really felt that our next head coach had to have that trait and had to have that characteristic. And uh, we're incredibly proud and incredibly happy to have you as a head coach going forward. So I didn't want to, I don't want to spend too much time up here because that is the man who, who we're all here for. So um, Willie Green, why don't you have this floor, bud? We're incredibly happy to have you. Thank you, thank you. Um, I'd like to start off by thanking God. Um, this is a, my family and I were, were truly blessed and fortunate um, for this opportunity. I'd like to thank uh, Bob Myers, Joe Lacob, Steve Kerr, and the Golden State Warriors organization for giving me my start in coaching. Um, so, once again, blessed to be a part of a, a great organization. I'd like to also thank Steve, I'm, I'm sorry, Monty Williams, James Jones, uh, and Robert Sarver. Monty is a, is a true leader, friend, brother, and I'm so grateful to, to have these last couple years learned under him. He's really taken me under his wing and just helped me grow as a coach, as a man, as a person, as a father, as a husband. Um, you talked about presence, you talked about leadership, one of the reasons that I'm here is because so many people have invested in me. Prayer, still praying, supported me, and I wouldn't be in this position without people investing. My coach, college coach in Detroit, Perry Watson, I always say he was ahead of his time. The fundamentals, uh, holding us accountable, making sure we got the class on time, we graduated, more importantly, he made sure that we were really good young men, and that's important. My uncle Gary Green, uh, who's no longer here, but without him, I wouldn't be here. And we all have that, that special person in our lives who helps us go. He was that for me. Just a man who, no matter what I was going through, was there for me, um, spoke it into existence, supported me, but also challenged me. And that's important. My grandmother, my parents, my dad, so thankful and grateful to have that opportunity to, to have a, a support system around me. And my family that's here, my son Ross, Aaliyah, Mason, and my wife Tara, thank you all. Um, all the moves that we had, busy schedule, <laughs> missing games, missing dinners, I'm so grateful for you all. I love you all. And um, I'm blessed for this opportunity. Thank you to Trajan, 
David Griffin, Mrs. Benson, all of you all that's here, the staff, for welcoming us back home to New Orleans, where really this is this is my journey started as a, as a father, as a husband, right here in this city. So it's fitting to be back here today, and um, I'm looking forward to the future here in New Orleans, what we can bring here together, the partnership. Uh, David Griffin, thank you for believing in me, giving me this great opportunity, and I'm excited about it. I really am excited about it. So if, if we want to open up anything to questions, that was just my quick, <laughs> quick spiel about me being grateful and thankful. Um, I'm, once again, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to work with our extremely talented young players, along with our staff here. Um, to support me, and I'm supporting them. We're, we're, we're all in it together, so I'm, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to being connected and, and taking things to a next level, to the next level. So we can up, open it up for questions. Anybody have any questions, we can go from there. Oh, it goes back to Rick. Thank you, Coach. Congratulations. I'm actually very much looking forward to working with you in person after uh, <laughs> last year. Uh, we're going to welcome questions from the media now. Now, this event is streaming, so we're going to give you a microphone, state your affiliation, and your questions. So uh, at this time, we'll take our first question. Uh, let's go. Will Guillory. Hey, sorry if I could just preface your question, Will. Um, we are not allowed to address the rumored impending deal that was discussed uh, in the media. So we are going to refrain from answering any questions on that, but just to jumpstart the process for you, Will. It's all good. Uh, yeah, Willie, it's Will Guillory from The Athletic. Uh, this is your first opportunity to be a head coach. I guess what should we expect a Willie Green coach team to look like, and what are your expectations going into training camp? Well, uh, a Willie Green coach team, um, Number one, we, we're gonna coach our staff. We're gonna coach with love, with accountability. Um, you're gonna see a team that goes out and represents this city. Um, we talked about being joyous. It's, it's one of the things that I, I feel New Orleans is proud of. The people here, they work extremely hard. Um, it's a connected community, but we wanna have a good time doing it. Um, and, that's the team that you're gonna see. Hey Willie, I'm uh, Christian Clark with NOLA.com. Just in uh, you know your initial conversations with Griff, Trajan, Swin, looking at this young roster, um, why did you just you know decide this was something you wanted to be a part of? Well, after after um, the initial discussions with Griff, with Trajan, with Swin, I just felt like it was the right fit. Uh, all of our conversations were at ease, were comfort, comforting, and we were all honest with each other. Uh, Griff was honest, I was honest about things that I saw or maybe things that happened here. Griff was straightforward with me. Uh, talking to Mrs. B uh, was awesome, and I felt like this was the right fit for my, myself and, and my family. Hey, Willie, Rod Walker with the Times Picayune. Um, whenever we talk to people about you, they talk about your ability to connect with players. Where did that ability come from and you know, what makes you so good at doing that? Yeah, when, when I think about coaching, um, and I, I think I've mentioned this to Griff before, of course my family, but the best coaches are not the X's and O's. You know, people can do that. The best coaches are the people that you know care about you, the best teachers. And connecting with players is no different than just connecting with people. You realize really quickly that you have a lot, a lot more in common than you don't. And that's, that's sort of my take and my approach in basketball. I figure it's easier to get guys or get people to reach their max when they know you care about them. That's my way or our way of connecting with 
with players. Uh, hello, Willie. My name is Fletcher Mack. I work at WDSU, the NBC television station here. David referenced this as a, a sleeping giant. Do you have any reasons why you could give us examples that you also believe this is a sleeping giant of an organization ready to take a step? Absolutely. Number one, it's, it's great people here. And that's the start. High character, people that are all working together, connected, a partnership and, and raising the level here in New Orleans. Um, this situation actually reminds me a lot of Phoenix. Really high, talented players, the staff, same thing, um, high character, people that love to come to work, love to work together, and we're really close to taking the next step. And I believe going into next season, that's our goal, that's our mindset, and that makes it a sleeping giant. You have two young all-stars, uh, putting a lot of talent around those guys, and, and really just making this team go. Over here, uh, William, over here, on your right, I guess. There oh. you go, yeah. Hey, uh, welcome back to New Orleans. Thank you. Um, I wonder if you could touch on something that you briefly mentioned already, and that was uh, being uh, honest with the front office about what you saw. Um, is it, are there any examples that you could discuss here about things that you saw, both that you really liked, the potential of, but also things that you wanted to address in a different way, maybe? Well, one of the things that I asked or that we discussed was, you know, the different coaching changes. Um, it, was, it was a discussion that I wanted to be honest about and Griff wanted to be honest about, Trajan and Swin. And the, the important piece to that that we left out of the room feeling really comfortable with was the fit. Um, both coaches, really good coaches, but the fit was important. It was important for Griff, it was important for myself, Trajan, it's important for all of us. And we left the room feeling confident that we, we all fit together and wanted the same things. Uh, Willie, this is uh, Andrew Lopez from ESPN.com. You mentioned the being able to have those relationships with players. Speaking of two that are here, Brandon uh, Ingram and Zion Williamson, have you had a chance to talk to them yet? And what were your early impressions of, of, of them so far? Yeah. Um, I've been playing a lot. We've been playing a lot of basketball, so I'm kind of behind the eight ball just a little bit. But I've, I've reached out to a number of our players, and we're sort, we're sort of gaining traction now in terms of responding, text messages, getting on text exchange. So playing a little bit of catch up because of the finals run that we just had, but um, I'm sure we'll, we'll continue to get there. Um, but I'm looking forward to working with all of our guys. Here, um, Chris Hagen with Fox 8 here in New Orleans. Um, having coached on some staffs that have won a lot of games over the last few years, what have you seen, I guess, that's the main component of winning consistently, I guess specifically with the Warriors and seeing them accomplish um, what they did year in and year out? Well, great question. And this is something that we, once again, we discussed in the interview process is starting with defense. I think that translates to winning at a high level during the regular season, but also in the playoffs, which is what we want to be. We want to be a playoff team. We want to be a team that competes for championships. So I think in talking to our staff moving forward, it's going to be something that we really hone in on. Christian Clark with uh, Noel.com here again. You just had the one season here as a player, but when you think back to that time, any uh, flashbulb memories or, or anything that sticks out to you? Absolutely. Um, like I said, it, it, was, it was really the start to myself as a young man and having a family. My wife and I had just got married, so getting trading, traded here to New Orleans was one of the best basketball experiences of my life. Uh, the people, the community, the food, the culture. I don't think um, tourists really get a chance to, to understand this city unless you live here. 
And after living here for one year, it's impacted us so great. Uh, we're, we're so proud to be back and, and have this opportunity to come back to this city and continue this process. So I'm, I'm grateful. Hey, Coach, uh, Doug Mouton at WWL-TV. We're the CBS station here in New Orleans. When you look at Zion, just as, you know, as a coach, as a former player, how would you describe him? What is special about him? And do you see ways that maybe he can be used that he hasn't yet, things he's still developing? Yeah, Zion is, is, a, is a special talent. Quick, fast, speed, uh, athleticism. He can play make, he can do a lot on the basketball floor. And so, you know, as we, as we, as I get together with our staff and continue to watch film, the thing about him is that sky is the limit. It really is. And it's, it's what excites me. I know it's what excites us is that he's a guy that can do pretty much anything on the basketball floor. Uh, we'll look at some areas that maybe we can improve on, but it's really highlighting his strengths, things that he does well, and how can we continue to keep him playing at a, at a really high level. So I'm excited about that. Hey Willie, just going back to your days at Cooley High, did you ever imagine that, that you'd be sitting up here on the, the day before your 40th birthday? And, and what does it just mean to you to, to be a head coach at this age? You know, I, I didn't imagine being here, I can be honest with you, of being the head coach, but I do believe in, you know, dreaming big and writing goals down and having a vision. The NBA was definitely something that I wanted to, to get to, uh, even in high school, but it's steps to it. I wanted to be good in high school. I wanted to be good in college. And as I progress through the ranks, the NBA, it happened for me, and I was blessed and fortunate to be able to use this platform to now become a coach. And when I really think about it, I've always had really good coaching, uh, starting with my own parents and uncles and aunts and cousins, but also coaches high school, college, and in and, 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 and the NBA, and some of my teammates. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I'm here today is to, to continue to invest in other people. Hey, Willie, uh, one more. <laughs> um, look, you mentioned the similarities to Phoenix um, here. Look, you had young pieces there and you got the right veterans to go with them. Um, as you look at this roster, um, is that something you feel like maybe this team needs is sort of the right kind of veterans to go with the young pieces? Yeah, I think we're, we're continuing to look at the roster and ways that we can improve, but we, we like our team right now. And Griff, Trajan, Swin, our staff, we're gonna work together to continue to try to put the best team on the floor. But I'm, I'm excited because I think we're right there and, and we wanna make the next step. Um, that's what this is about. That's why I'm here, is to help in that process. Uh, that's why our staff is here. And once again, I'm, I'm learning I'm growing, there's gonna be some mistakes, but I'm very excited about where I, I believe this team can go. Hey coach, over here again. Um, you, you talk about being a young coach, I think you'll be the third youngest head coach in the NBA. Have you thought about your staff? How, how will you work with David and Trajan on, on filling out that staff? And will you potentially look to somebody with head coaching experience since you are a first time head coach as an assistant? Yeah, we continue to have those discussions. Uh, Griff and I, Trajan, but you know, we have a great staff in place already. And a lot of the people on our staff I know have worked with, have played against, and we're very confident in what our staff can do. They're gonna help me become a better coach um, right now and as we continue. And it's what allows us to do our job at a high level is that we have really good people. And I'll continue to reiterate that. That's what makes this organization a great organization. That's what's gonna help us through the tough times is that we have people that care, we have people that work hard, and I'm excited to, to hit the ground running. One more over here on 
you're right. Yeah, Brett Martell again with AP. Just wondering if you could share uh, briefly anything that you and Monty may have discussed regarding this particular opportunity. <laughs> Absolutely. Monty means the world to me. Um, when he heard that I had an opportunity to go interview with New Orleans, not only did he make me go, but he just kind of walked me through the steps and he was so um, just diligent in, in his processes of, of helping me along the way. I'm so grateful to, to once again learn under uh, a man like Monty, a coach like Monty, a brother like Monty. I said it earlier that the reason that we're in these positions today or that I'm in this position is because so many people have prayed, invested, and supported me. And I'm, I'm grateful to be here. All right, we also have a Zoom audience, so we're gonna take a couple of questions from our Zoom viewers. Henry? We can get started here with Chris Dodson. Hey, Coach, Chris Dodson, Forbes Sports. Welcome back to the city. Uh, to make it quick, I was wondering what your approach is for like summer league because you're going to hit the ground running there and bonding with the team on road trips when you're out to Vegas and the rest of those, you know, West Coast, East Coast road trips that take a week. I, I didn't understand the question. Can you say it again? I'm just wondering about your approach to like summer league and going out and just getting with the team and then how you're going to bond with them on road trips, stuff like that when you're not in New Orleans working in this gym. Oh, got you, got you. Uh, yeah, we're, we're looking. I'm, I'm excited about summer league. Um, we'll get together with the staff really soon, talk about the schedule, talk about how we can continue to get get in the gym and get guys better. I'm, I'm, I'm going to coach definitely some games in summer league to get us going in the right direction to implement our system. And, and the way that we connect this, and Griff and Trajan and Swin have already been doing it, but try to get some dinners on the road, um, team dinners, you know, just try to bond in the hotel. Obviously, because of what we're dealing with, it's not much we can do, but we want to stay connected as best we can, and, and we'll look for creative ways in doing that. That will be the only question we have this Zoom, so back to you, Griff. All right, thanks, Henry. That is going to wrap up our festivities here today. Again, I want to thank everybody for coming and all the fans who are tuned in. Subscribe now and stay up to date for all things New Orleans Pelicans.